Professor Theodore. Welcome to my Telecom Stars in Cars interview. Hey Isabel, thank you for having me. Happy to be here. So you may not know, but there's no such thing as a free ride. So the price of this ride is an interview with, with me. Are you ready? Happy to pay the price. I mean, what can I do now? <laughs> You're my prisoner. You're one of my victims, as I like to say. So there's a lot happening in the A2P market and then at Vox, you work a lot with the operators in the A2P segment. So what do you think are the biggest trends at the moment and the biggest challenges when it comes to A2P? One, the this, let's say, decline, which is happening for the first time in, I think, A2P SMS history, is driven by increased competitiveness. So you have other channels, specifically IP-based channels, you have uh, and others that are now competing with A2P SMS and, you know, variable cost is low. So they price below SMS and try to get as much as they can of the market. So that will be one. Second, you have fraud. Uh, and this has been a topic for a very long amount of time, but it seems there is still significant fraud and you have artificial inflation of traffic, you have uh, a lot of gray routes and that's still, you know, limiting the use of A2P SMS or limiting the revenue operators get from it. And that can easily be solved. The third thing um, is on, let's say, price, competitive, price competition. So what I mean by this is mobile network operators have increased prices for A2P SMS within the past years consistently. Some regions more, some regions less, but I think in, in general, this has surely increased. And uh, I think this took a toll on the budget of international enterprises in some regions. And uh, let's say that the market wanted to cut a bit costs. So because of that, the, let's say, penetration of these alternatives has been accelerated. So I think these are the, the, the three main things. Why is it to be still so important for operators? The first one is control. SMS is a channel that you as a mobile network operator can control, right? And that is from a security point of view, also content that is reaching your users, right? You want a certain quality of service, a certain level of transparency of what is happening, as opposed to other channels, which are not, let's say, your, your to control, right? That's one thing. The second thing is financial importance. So A to P SMS is one of the, let's say, services or business lines that has a high gross uh, profit margin within telecommunications. And it brings up to, I've seen up to 5% of revenue in mobile network operators, maybe up to 20% of EBITDA. It depends on the region. The more developing the country, the more high, the higher the importance of A2P SMS is. But uh, by looking at these numbers, I mean, you can understand that when you're doing financial planning, it's a very important service to have and to consider its sustainability, actually. So, and that's something that we need to discuss. And the third thing is, I, SMS is more than just a channel from my point of view. There's more potential to it. There is uh, ways in which A2P SMS can be used in order to drive other products for MNOs. Uh, and I think we're just exploring that today, but uh, we can do more of it is basically is the, is, is the conclusion that I'd get to. Okay. And what about Vox? What do you do to help these operators optimize you know, their revenue when it comes to A2P? Yeah, so that's, that's somehow our bread and butter. So. Um, what we do is we work with over 30 mobile network operators globally to monetize their A2P SMS business. It all started from anti-fraud technology, which is the core of what we do. So our technology is able to do multiple things. The first one is stop fraud. So fraud scenarios that are out there and we use AI in order to do that. Otherwise, stopping it in real time is extremely difficult. Uh, so we have our own firewall analytics and many other modules that I'm not going to go into. Mm -hmm. uh, then. Uh, our technology can stop also like part of these alternatives, for example, flash calls. They're flash calls, uh, if you know about them, they're missed calls through through uh, their authentication via missed calls. And uh, they don't get, uh, there's no revenue in for the mobile network operator, unfortunately, in the agreements that currently exist in the market. Not saying it's not something that could happen, not saying it's a technology that operators could implement and build, but we actually give them this opportunity. You know, they can choose what to do with them. We give them the backbone to identify them and then they can uh, take a stance or then another. And this is operator strategy. This is not for us to, for, to decide from my point of view. So they can block or monetize flash calls. And then the, the third thing, uh, we our technology makes a, a to PSMS or keeps A2P SMS competitive, I'd say. And this is what I was getting at, I think. 
what I was when we were talking about, you know, how alternatives exist currently and that there's no way to avoid that. And lastly, uh, with our technology, we're also helping operators tap into, let's say, the marketing space. So I think that's something that operators and us as an ecosystem are still to explore. I think there's a lot of great marketing uh, services out there. And this is obviously pioneered by the large tech companies that, that exist, but operators have a lot of data. They have large customer bases as well. And I think they're yet to derive that value. Thank you so much, Jadar, for an amazing- Thank you, Isabel. And who knows, we may pick you up another time and do another interview somewhere else and around yeah, the world. Absolutely, now I understand it's not for free, but yeah, definitely, <laughs> I'm good, good to go for that. Thank, thank you thank very you. much. Everyone, thank you for watching and until my next Telecoms in Star Hotshot.